Welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the technique twisted twig, its attack, its execution, some of the things that can go wrong during its execution, and some things it can do to compensate for it, and a few things that you should know about it. So the first thing we need to talk about is this attack. You know, a lot of people go, hey, look, I hand in my hand and he does this. That's kind of stupid. Agree, it is kind of stupid. So keep in mind that when we're doing risk uh, attacks like this, they're generally what are considered positions or ideas of opportunity. So what that means is we're probably in some sort of a tussle here and he, he sees that he goes to apply it on me or I go, hey, whoa, stop. And he begins to apply it on me. So this isn't, you're just standing there and somebody reaches down to grab your hand. So if they were to do that, that's a pretty stupid thing for them to do because they're just exposing themselves. And the counter to that is you just don't want to give it to them so that they have it. So what you want to do, generally speaking, is maybe start out with a bow of compulsion motion or something like that, saying, hey, stop, you know, you're in a pseudo passive position rather than a total passive position. So just keep that in mind. A lot of people complain about what this beginning motion is and how they're attacking. They're taking it too literally. You need to take it less literally. So next thing we worry about is what's happening with this attack. It could be way up here, it could be here, or it could be down here. So this technique is designed to work in all situations. It can work higher, middle, or lower. The key to this is that your hand is going to be at the pivot point because they are going to be going that way or that way. And what you want to do is go with it in order to use your hand as a pivot point will counter what they're doing. Now, if you notice, look what's going on here. This is the next thing to consider. He's doing what's called a two-hand wrist lock, right? He could just as easily be doing a one-hand wrist lock. This, again, will work with either situation. If it's a one-handed wrist lock, you would check their hand off and then begin to do this motion. If it's a two-hand, the ideal phase is just put your hand to check to get the upper hand in their hand and then do this. A better way to do this is to match them. So you are now in a battle of matching. And since you know what to do, you can come up and hit them. Thing that you don't want to do if you're going to do this option is bring it up because that gives them a bigger opportunity to hit you. What you want to do is try and drop it down. Why? Look what just happened to his face. I'm going to be coming up with an elbow and I'm going to drop him down into that elbow. Okay? So if you are going to be doing the advanced version, which is the counter lock to the, to the lock, then make sure you drop down. Use a smaller circle rather than a bigger circle. Okay? So he begins to apply this and as he begins to apply it, we're going to notice the pressure on there. So what we're going to do is throw this elbow up and in to hit up under the chin. There are two positions you could be in here. You could be in a neutral bow, which doesn't quite give me the distance I need for this, or I could be in a horse. So what we want to do is be in this horse, especially if you're a smaller person, because you're going to need that extra reach in order to get to their chin. Okay? So though you could do a neutral bow, it's far better to do the horse because what's coming next also is in alignment better for the, the follow-up maneuver. So what we're going to do, we get to the counter, hit. Now, one of the things that you'll see people do is they will pull a hand back in order to get the elbow, and now you're in what's called a pass line position. You have to worry about that. What we're going to do is something very similar to what we do in Heavenly Ascent. You just drop this up and then drive your weight down and in towards this opponent. Okay? You don't want to make this a big line in which they have time to counter you. Okay? So we go. One, two, this way. Now the next thing you can also see people do is they'll pull hand, their hand out or circle it in order to get to the groin. And again, you're in a second pass line position. So what you want to do is something similar to what we do in circling wing. What you want to do is just turn your body and drive everything towards that opponent. If I were to pull my hand out this way and do a circle, you'll see a lot of people lean away. And what that means is my weight is going that direction, my hit is going that direction. What I want is everything going in the same direction, okay? So let's review this a little bit more. We could counter, we could check, and if it's a one hand, we could check to the check. Either way, it's, it's the way we're gonna start. This could work high, middle, or low, doesn't matter. Hand is the pivot point. We come up into a horse, not a neutral bow. We do not pull our hand away. We just shoot from there and drop down, settling into our horse. Turn away, shoot everything in, keeping the left hand as a check. Lean back if you can, cross out the cover if you find it necessary. You want to do anything else in that technique, you're more than welcome to. 
You don't have to leave at that point. There's buckles and other things that you can do. So just slightly faster so that you can see how it works. Hope this video helps you. Thank you very much.